Friends, you may remember this vice from a couple of years ago. It's my rendition of the Fireball Tools Super Vice. And uh, it, it served me fairly well, but I broke it. I'll leave a card up in the corner to Jason's original vice build so you can see exactly what the inspiration for this vice was. We were trying to use it to get the bushings out of an A-arm of a Dodge pickup and it just kind of seized. I had to cut the drive nut off the end just to be able to get access to the inside. Now there's the dynamic jaw. It's, uh, there's really nothing wrong with it. But here's the screw and it is just plain stuck. So what we're going to do today is build a new vise that incorporates all the best features of this one and eliminates all the weaknesses. And the first step to doing that is find out the exact nature of this failure. I don't know why it's jammed. I suspect this piece of all thread is stretched because we put too much pressure on it. But the only way to find that out is disassemble it. Now I'll just split this because all this is is a nut that I rounded off and, and welded on there. Okay, so here I've removed the nut and split it to get it out and here we've got this smeared area on the threads and from what I understand that is what happens when the screw has been stretched and it changes the thread pitch. Then it finds a little galled area on the inside of the threads and smears itself just like it's done here. So that's the source of the failure. Now this is a three-quarter ten thread per inch piece of all thread and it was grade five. So to address this issue, I'm going to use three-quarter inch sixteen thread per inch all thread that is grade eight. And that's what I'll be replacing this with. Here was another weak point. This angle here I got from Jason's design concept because, you know, it looked cool. But having that angle made it so the base of the vise could bend something if it, if it was really long, trying to be clamped in there. So we're going to eliminate that in the next rendition. Now these half inch brackets, those worked fine, but this 3 8 inch jaw face, if I clamp something out here on the edge, it would flex. So we're going to beef that up. I'm thinking we're going to go with at least 3 quarter inch, maybe 1 inch thick jaw on the next rendition. The aluminum jaw face, that worked pretty well, so we'll stick with that. Now the maximum usable opening I got on this thing was realistically 8 inches. I mean, you could stretch it farther if you wanted to, but for all intents and purposes, 8 inches was the max. So I want that larger. Looking down at the pedestal base, the sundial idea is cool, and it works, so I think we can keep that. But this semi-truck flywheel as a base, it, it didn't work out so well. Between this recessed area and this ridge, it just collects a bunch of dirt. So we're going to replace that. Here I've got a piece of half inch plate steel that should work just fine. So, new vice body, new dynamic jaw, stronger screw, bigger base. And the other issue is my speed handle wasn't all that tight, it kind of fluffed around a little bit. So we're going to tighten up the fit on that and we're going to install spring loaded ball detents. So instead of just sliding on, it will actually snap into place. Okay, so we've got our threaded rod, a couple of coupling nuts, a tube for the threaded rod to ride in, a tube we can use for the body, a tube we can use for the dynamic jaw, and some plate steel. Okay, so one of the things we're going to have to do is make this fit inside this. So what we're going to do is spin this and hit it with a grinder until it gets small enough to slide into that. So there's our coupler nut rounded over, and now it fits. A little bit of a tight fit, but I want a tight fit. We'll drill some holes in there to plug weld it into place. And here we go. Those three plug welds should hold that in just fine without damaging it too badly. Now we need to move on to the next step, and that is removing this weld from the inside of the larger square tube. And Jason over at Fireball Tool has a particular method he uses for this. What he does is he creates a brooch and pulls it through and basically scrapes that weld right off. And I'll leave a card up in the corner to Jason's video on that subject. But what we're going to do is we're going to build a tool called the Seams Impossible. And it was developed by a fellow YouTuber who goes by the handle of the Next Level Carpenter. 
and I'll leave a card up in the corner to his build video of this tool. What it is is you get a carbide burr and a couple of bearings and you make a little sled that will ride in the tube and allow you to grind out the weld with the carbide burr. So the first thing we'll do is we'll cut a block of wood that will fit inside the tube and we want it to fit nice and snug. So I'm going to take that over to the belt sander and round this edge off to the same radius as, th as one of these corners and that will be a starting place. Okay that's rounded off to the same radius and these two sides have been smoothed off with the belt sander. Now we'll come in and trace and cut to match the entire inside of the tube. It's kind of hard to see on camera but there's an outline of the inside of the tube. Now we'll cut this down and make it fit nice and snug right through the middle of that. Now we'll head back to the belt sander and sand that down for a perfect fit. Okay, now that fits mostly, but what's keeping it from sliding over is the weld. One of the things that we could do about that is use the weld as a broach. See, so the weld left a nice dent there. Now what we'll do is we'll come in and cut out a relief right there so that whole weld can pass through. So we'll just come in here with a chisel and carve out that. Okay, so now here we've got a pretty good snug fit. It'll pass completely through. I had to scoop out for the weld. I think some paste wax on this will probably improve the uh, fit. So not only is this a decent uh, wood finish, it will keep your table saw from rusting. And your drill press, all your tools that have steel tabletops that aren't painted. Oh yeah, look at that. That is, that is a nice smooth fit. That is exactly what we want. All right, one thing we need to do is mark where the weld is. And the reason we need to do that is because it is usually not in the middle. And this is 31 millimeters from one side, 33 millimeters from the other side. So this burr is gonna be sitting inside this block or it's going to be hanging out the front of this block. And one thing we want to do is we want to position it in such a way that it takes maybe a, a 64th or a 32nd of an inch extra off the weld. So we want it to dip into the wall ever so slightly. And the reason we want to do that is because if you don't, there's going to be some of that weld protruding and it may prevent you from getting a nice smooth slip fit. We're going to drill out for that forward bearing. And we only want that about three-eighths of an inch deep. Then we'll come in from the other side. Square that up. Now on this side, I think we just want it like an inch and a half deep. Then we'll come in with a larger bit to accommodate the clamping section on our extension here. But we only want this to go about an inch and a quarter. Or maybe just an inch. Then finally we want to punch through with a 1764 bit to uh, create a relief space for the shaft of our burr. Alright, so down there you can see we have the little space for our bearing to sit and then the relief for our shaft and then on the other end we have another place for the other bearing to sit and a little space in between them. We kind of got lucky that that notch I cut created a slot for the set screws so we can tighten them down. There in that first bearing just sits in there nicely and this other one should fit right down in there just as nicely and then our burr should slide through those bearings. The only problem now is my drive shaft's only this long but my tubing is eight inches longer. So one thing I could do is just use another extension except I don't have one so I'm going to cut this one and extend it. Then I'll use the drill and a belt grinder to put nice cones on the end to give us a bevel to weld to. In order to get a good alignment of the extension, I've cut some large notches into a piece of square tubing and tacked it to the table. Then I come in with some wooden shims to firmly hold the rods into the corners of the square tubing. This ensures a perfectly straight alignment. Then I'll weld it. And that turned out really straight. You know, I really love it when the plan comes together. Now you can see there I hit that 32nd of an inch dig into the wall just spot on. I am very happy with that. 
And here I'm applying anchor lube to the inside of the tube on the weld to give that burr some sort of lubrication because we don't want to burn that up. That's probably plenty. That made such a nice cut. That is just absolutely beautiful. Now it's time for our first test fit. Oh yes, look at that. That is, now that is just what you want. So I have here my tail cap. This is going to be the end that the tube protrudes out of and bolts onto the end of the tail stock. Now my last vise from earlier in the video had the tail welded on. Uh, that was a problem. This one's going to bolt on. And to make sure this is absolutely square on the end here, I cut this with a pipe cutter. I had previously cut it with my cold saw, and I decided the pipe cutter was going to give me a little bit squarer cut. So if we subtract half the diameter of the round tube from half of the width of the square tube, that value should give us the appropriate distance from the edge that the tube should sit in. And you can see here that it is the same from all sides. I'm not going to give you the value because you may have different size tubes than me. Here we have a stack of three 3 8 inch plates. Two fit inside the square tube. One is the same size as the square tube. Staining the plate with Sharpie marker and scribing it with a caliper will show us the center of the plate. Then we'll center punch it and drill it. Now all the plates are pretty secure, so we'll just drill the whole stack all at once. And what that'll do is give us a common pilot hole for each of the three plates that need to be drilled separately. Now the last thing we're going to want to do is cut some one inch plate for the vise jaws. And after that, we'll be ready to start fitting all the pieces together. And just so you know, this piece of one inch plate is only eight inches long and it took a good 25 minutes to cut on the porta band. It was not easy. Okay, so here are all the pieces for the vise. I think I'm going to run these jaws through the milling machine and I'm reluctant to show you guys that because if you watch the channel at all, you know I don't like to use sophisticated tools. I like to do things that anybody and everybody could do. Anyway, it's New Year's Eve and I want to get a video out for you guys before the end of the year. And I know I haven't been producing as much content this year as I had in the past. And there are reasons for that that I don't want to get into. This is part one. Stay tuned for part two. I know you guys are going to love the result. I'm happy to answer any questions in doobly doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click up here to see something on mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one. And a Happy New Year.